Radiology at the Medical University of South Carolina, and we're talking about surgical mesh. What concerns should a woman have with surgical mesh as a part of a surgery for stress incontinence or pelvic organ prolapse? There's sort of been a revival uh, in the use of surgical mesh over the last several years. Um, back about 20 or 25 years ago, um, uh, we went through a period uh, in pelvic floor reconstruction uh, where mesh was uh, utilized a fair amount. The mesh materials that were used uh, in that time frame, tw 20 or 25 years ago, were a very different type of mesh uh, and synthetic material uh, that is used today. Um, synthetic material uh, has advantages and disadvantages when we implant it in the human body. Uh, the reason that we use mesh in, in some individuals uh, is simply uh, that, number one, it lasts longer, it's permanent, uh, and number two, it may improve the long-term durability uh, and outcomes of these types of surgeries. Without the use of mesh, uh, these surgeries were prone to fail or are prone to fail uh, at perhaps a higher rate uh, than uh, with the use of mesh. What does failure mean? That means that the patient's coming back for another operation several years after we did the first operation, which was supposedly supposed to cure it. So by the use of mesh, we can perhaps reduce that reoperation rate with better long-term uh, success rates. And again, the meshes that we use today are distinct from the meshes that we were using 20 or 25 years ago, uh, and by and large, the uh, complication rate, uh, although there are no direct comparative studies, seem to be a bit lower. Which mesh materials are safer than others? There are generally two types of mesh. There's a monofilament mesh, uh, which uh, is made out of the same material uh, and has rather large holes in it, uh, and that's from a microscopic perspective. And then there's multifilament mesh, which again uh, has holes in it, but the material itself that's woven has uh, uh, very uh, small spaces that bacteria can hide and that the body's immune cells can't get to. So it seems to be uh, uh, that the multifilament mesh seems to be associated with a higher rate of problems, problems like infection uh, and exposure of the mesh postoperatively which then subsequently requires removal of the mesh. Now, we're not talking about tremendously large differences, but, but fairly significant such that most uh, in the United States have gone to using a monofilament type mesh. And what is the long-term risk of having a synthetic material in the body? Uh, we place lots of synthetic materials uh, in the body, uh, synthetic joints and, and parts of the eye, um, and a variety of other places. Um, synthetic mesh in the genital tract or the uh, outside the urinary tract uh, has uh, some risks. Uh, probably uh, uh, the most significant risk uh, is discomfort uh, following mesh placement. Um, the mesh uh, generally doesn't become softer uh, uh, over the course of, of years. So if it's placed vaginally, which is the most common place we place it for, for prolapse surgery, a cystocele, rectocele, uh, or for stress incontinence surgery, um, if the mesh is placed in such a way that uh, uh, sexual intercourse becomes painful uh, for either uh, the individual who has the mesh or their partner, uh, then uh, generally we need to redo uh, uh, the uh, mesh, remove a piece of the mesh. Uh, mesh placement uh, not only can cause pain during intercourse, as I just mentioned, but uh, can also cause uh, difficulties with urination. Uh, it can cause, uh, um, uh, 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 the, I should say, the, the vaginal tissues can uh, separate immediately postoperatively at, right after the surgery and the mesh can become exposed and sometimes we have to remove it. Um, uh, it can uh, also, uh, in rare cases, uh, become infected and need to be removed. That's probably more common uh, with some of the older meshes uh, than 
than the present measures that we use.